then this is how governments are moral. This organization that calls itself the government then only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I and my friends here all share. Or media, I would say. Some media is not necessarily violence that they promote, but they use that in order to subjectify us and keep us in like our little tiny boxes. Yeah. So. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they will twist the information. Yep. It's definitely not on bias out there. And I think a lot of people are starting to see today, I guess, their distrust and coming out from media sources. I wish that was true, but I try to talk to people about things like that. And I don't, even if people see it, a lot of my friends, when I try to talk to them about the things that I'm learning, they they don't want to know about it. They don't want to care. I can show them things about uh, people, or young children in China being worked for, what, 50 cents a day to make our clothing, and they don't care. They still want to buy the same products. They don't want to, they don't even want to hear about it. Right. The distraction is very powerful here in the media stuff, right? People want to play the PlayStation and plug themselves yeah. to the Bluetooth. Um, as it were, like when you look at Vietnam and all this footage of, of uh, all the war dead were coming home, people saw that and uh, had a visceral reaction to it. We were on the streets marching trying to end this war. The government uh, a while ago made it illegal for some of these images to come back here. So of course if nobody sees the violence, uh, they're kind of placated, you can say, right. right, from the reality of what's really going on out there. Yep. Um, I guess, what are you studying here at uh, VCU? Um, I'm a psych major and minor in sociology. Okay, so yeah. yeah, trying to do the psyche with your friends yeah. and get them understand. <laughs> they don't care. I mean, this semester I'm taking a lot of um, like a gender studies class and introduction to sociological theory, and it kind of talks about like Karl Marx and a lot of different things that open up your eyes to the way that our society is ran, right. the way the government is ran, the media, the portrayal of like what is reality, what is the norm, and. In my opinion, there's really no such thing. It's just what the media perpetuates and what we're willing to accept as individuals or as a society to say that this is okay or this is a norm when right. most of it really is yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> not at absolutely. all normal. <laughs> so. What do you think of uh, the argument against government then? Right? If government is an institution of morality and your moral values are against using violence, mm -hmm. um, therefore participating in government will in a way conflict, right? It tricks us into compromising our principles for politics, as it were. Yeah, I mean, it does, but there also are good politicians to an extent that want to fight for certain things, I think, that want to raise awareness like you do on certain things. Like, I personally like Bernie Sanders. I like the way that he talks about the government and how he points things out. So I don't think necessarily every politician or every government official is is like that but the top one percent the people that hold the most money in the world etc cetera, etc cetera, the they're the ones that have a lot of push. The government, the top of the government, are the ones that I feel like do the, I don't know, Congress, a lot of other things right. too, I'm sure. Uh, the, the things that Bernie Sanders and his policies was advocating for though, and verily though, when, it, when people talk about when we want free college, we want free uh, these things, those things do eventually have to come out of other people's pockets. Right. Point, their taxes, right? Yep. Um, so when we look at government then, what is it objective? We look like Obama's uh, health care or death care for most, most people, uh, is a monopolized service. Right. right. That's all the government. Government has monopolized a service in which no one has the freedom to cancel or subscribe from or compete yep. entrepreneurially then, right? True. Yep. In order to say, I provide a better service that's not going to be abusive to you, the consumer, right? Uh, something local here would be like ABC in Virginia. That's a monopoly on alcohol, right? Yeah. Uh, the post office is a monopoly on uh, first class mail. It's illegal and criminal for FedEx or UPS to compete in the market delivering pieces of paper. They can only deliver packages. But they do. They can only deliver packages. It has to be in a package uh, uh, description in which the government says uh, that's fine. And even if you look on, the, on their website, they'll say we have a monopoly on first class mail. Right. They have to be a specific size to be considered a package. Right. So that's what I mean. So when you look at then what is government, that is this a monopoly. Uh, whenever you have a, a monopoly, when there's no competition, costs will invariably rise up. Right. Quality will go down. Uh, this is the problem in terms of like a lot of healthcare systems in Europe right now that's incurring. Uh, this is why tuition rates here continue to go higher and higher. When you monopolize the education system, yeah. when government guarantees their tuition, yeah, they'll take the money. They know you'll have the money. So what do you recommend to not monopolize the education system? Right. So I guess the solution would be, if we're against monopolies, we have to be against the biggest monopoly at all, and that would be government. Right. When you have market competition, um, 
then you find that there's not just one product that meets the needs for everyone, right? There's a lot of people saying, well, maybe this product or service might suit your needs better than their needs, right? Right. And when you have that kind of competition, the costs go down, the quality goes up, right? I might not afford the next iPhone 8 or 9, but the iPhone 4 you could buy for like 20 bucks now, right? right. Get it on eBay. Mm -hmm. uh, but back then, iPhone 4 was like a couple hundred dollars, right? So that's what happens when you have people competing in the market for any of these services, for education. Capitalism. For, well, yeah, capitalism just means respect for property rights. Um, there would be no corporations, and that, that's a lot of fear in what Bernie Sanders talks about, right, in terms of the 1% in Wall Street. Uh -huh. uh, but the corporations can't exist without government. Right. All it is is a piece of paper that allows CEOs to escape liability for their actions, right? The same immunity, though, the government agents grant themselves. You can't sue a state prosecutor, a, a judge. Uh, a president can pardon themselves if they wanted to, right? right? But you have no such power yourself, right? right? So that is an extension of government. When we go after corporations, and I very much do agree they should be abolished, but we're going after the monsters that Frankenstein himself created, Dr. Mm -hmm. Frankenstein. So I would say the solution would be to go after Dr. Frankenstein uh, and his lab and nightmare and the mess Change. that he creates, right? And then abolish it. And then have uh, the things that we already used to in our, in our day to day lives. We don't use violence to solve problems. That has, there's no politics in our interactions. So let's remove politics and government outside of our lives and go back to how we, we work in our lives, right? Through peaceful means, through right. voluntary means, through consent, right? The Be really, nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, and that's, that's what we're presenting. Time and time again, they'll say, well, politics will set you free. Time and time again, they'll say, this politician will come in and be like the harbinger of good things to come. But then they all fall, right? Mm -hmm. uh, even Bernie Sanders, he's got a new home. Uh, you know, people feel like he's kind of betrayed a lot of the trust of a lot of people in the end. Right. Um, and then supporting Clinton afterwards, right? And then you have the two candidates now, right? A pile of shit versus another pile of shit. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these, are, these are our choices, right? I mean, people say, well, choose the lesser of two evils. So you just, uh, you say, no, I choose freedom, I choose peace. I want to involve myself in this evil machinery, right? right that does nothing but violence. and. Uh, wrongdoings to a lot of peaceful people, and you just choose the exit door, right? And is, are you saying choosing the exit door is to not vote? Yes. Not vote. Do something that no one's ever done in Well, history. I haven't been voting for a really long time. This is actually the first year I decided to vote, and that is because Trump is running. So, I... <laughs> right, right. But you absolve your sins, absolve your hands, have nothing to do with that. When, when Trump does something bad, if he wins, then it is on the people who advocated for him. But if what Hitler, if it's what if it affects me though? Then right, it's they're, on they're, me they're for both, not for not voting against Trump. I don't agree with the, the vote system. Don't get me right. don't get me wrong at all. That's why I haven't voted up till this to this point. But something morally inside of me says that if I don't do something, if I don't vote for the other and Trump becomes president and something happens that's I don't know, neo-Nazi type stuff going on, then I almost feel like I'm accountable for it because I didn't try to make a change. Now, at the same time, I feel like it's all bullshit because right. no matter what, they're going to have whoever, when, when. Like, right. that's, that's just the government for you. But I feel like I have to try. Well, Hillary's side, people would say, through Hillary, you may have a war war. With right. Russia, right. She's very aggressive stance towards Russia. Russia is now just uh, test like just released their new nuke that can abolish Texas with yep. one hit. Right. Um, and her aggressive stance, people will say that might bring in a war. Yep. They may send all the males out there to the front lines to die. Mm -hmm. And so you don't really have a good option with either or two. Right. Right. And I would say, and, and when government presents you these two options, is either government or government. Right. right. And so what we're presenting, the organization we're with, is called Liberate RVA. So it's completely non-political. And we want to do something that's never been done before and go anti-political, go against politicians How many government. people do you think is actually going to not vote, though, and go, you need a massive amount of people to Right, we're going for the long-term game here, uh -huh. right? So every, everything starts with one person, too. You plant these seeds, and these seeds will grow into these tall trees, trees of principles, right? And that's the kind of generation we want to grow here in Richmond. That's uh -huh. the kind of, to go to a peaceful future, we have to start through peaceful means that we already have, right. like the values you share. And that would mean if I were to participate in voting, I would be getting my candidate to violently force my opinions onto you, whether right. it's Hillary or Trump, right? Uh, so I guess this is, our, I would say, our moment then to, to do something that's going to work. Politics has never set anyone free. Why continue to continue to try and try again? Let's do something that's never been done at all and choose principles over politics. And from there, you'll find a lot of great friends that we all gather together, do a lot of meetups, talk about economics, history. Um, in, in all various aspects of that. But trying to create a community here that mm -hmm. one day, years from now, will grow in such a large that we could ignore government away, 
and we can also size them all together. That would be nice. Are you guys planning on to continue this every yes. every year for like elections? We're and pretty much out here. Yes. And all that crap. yes. 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 We've been doing All this right. for four years now. Do you guys should get like a sign up sheet so that you can email mass email people to when you have something for them to come back to listen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. We have so we have meetings every month where we talk about different topics. Uh, anything from like minimum wage, people have questions. What is it you know, what is it really? Let's examine mm -hmm. on you know, I guess details. Right, a logical standpoint. What is it? Or, or money or Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin? Have you heard of Bitcoin? Nope. It's cryptocurrency. Yeah. Uh, that the government can't track, so they can't tax you on it. They can't take that little piece. So if you and I, like, if you had a bike and I want to buy that bike from you, we could, I could send you Bitcoin with my phone and I, you know, would have my bike. Uh -huh. And then your Bitcoin, there's actually a, there's a brewery here that accepts Bitcoin. Yes. Um, so essentially, it's a currency that's outside of the government. Is that the dollar illegal? is monopolized. No, no. Government, no. Government it's like know. creation of your own money. That's right. Like right. Okay. Creating services that are outside of them, so that like we could exchange, or like if you had a business, you could sell stuff, and then the government wouldn't be able to take the tax. They wouldn't be able to tax you because they wouldn't know how much you make. They wouldn't right. know like who you sold it to. You know, it's it's just a way. But then what happens when taxes are gone to the people that are in? Pro I mean, like we still have plenty of people in poverty, but all the social services and things like that they go out to the community that's right. the small portion that is received now. Right. From right. So finally, but nearly <laughs> a hundred percent of your dollar will go back to the community here. Okay. Right. So you're talking about building. Okay, stripping it down and people, then right? rebuilding. We all want to help people, and right. now we can actually say, I'm going to give this money to specifically help people, not to be divvied between war. To and, go to a politician's you know, salary. Roads who's and yeah, exactly. So, right. or the court systems or whatever, I want it to go to help the homeless here in Richmond, or I want it to feed people that, you know. And who would be distributing that money? Would an individual themselves have to distribute you it, or would, it be yeah. an organization? You could, you could, like, start up your own organization when you go around collecting, like, you know, if we can do this. Kickstarter mm -hmm. campaigns, yeah. GoFundMe How many people do you think is really going to do that, though? Uh, well, a lot of people do it right now in terms of GoFundMe and Kickstarter. People have health problems, people need uh, any kind of help in need in terms of, like, surgery. You see it all the time on the news, and always raising that kind of money. People want to help each other. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that we ask, you know, what about the poor? What about her? What about him? Implies that we do care about each other. Right. Right. But in, when we give our money to government, in which we don't have an economic freedom to you decide where it goes. Twenty-five dollars, two dollars finally makes it to the person that you're meeting right. to give it to, or maybe one dollar. Right. So like like pennies from right. the dollar goes to where we actually wanted to go. Right. Right. So. From an organization then that is accountable to the people who are, who are paying, right, mm -hmm. to the people who are in there, um, those are the ones who would be in charge, right? And they, they would do it through like a long history where you can comment, you can rate them. You can't rate government. It's not like they're going to go away if you rate them, right? right? <laughs> right. If a business, you rate them low enough, no one will do business with them or patronize them, right? Right. Uh, so that's kind of what we want. We want all these services. We want these things, but we want it in a way that is voluntary. We want it in a way that actually efficiently meets the needs of everyone and not the pockets that line the people of City Hall at our expense. Um, and that, that most of these services, though, at one point in history in the past, were provided voluntarily. Like one thing I think you'll love if you ever Google is called friendly societies. Mm -hmm. uh, and these societies, before Medicare, Medicare, and Social Security, is what provided unemployment insurance, uh, health insurance for all these waves of migrants coming here to the United States. Um, and, it was, and everybody had it. It was like if you became poor, right, uh, mm -hmm. you'd be able to bounce right back. Car accident, wife died, any of that, uh, you'd be able to bounce back up. But the last thing government wanted was that kind of independence because people realized, well, we don't need government. Right. Government came in with their zoning administrators like, well, that's not up to code. That's not up to zone. Uh, yeah, you need to build a hundred thousand dollars to uh, upgrade this building. Yeah. They started threatening doctors' licenses uh, for, for for their profession, and then they got rid of that. And oh. then government came with their with their okay. versions of Medicaid, Medicare. So no, you have to be dependent on us, not within your own community to solve these problems. That's, that's one example of how the government is actually support the most starting your business like if you know anything about it if you've ever tried it it costs a lot of money yep you know getting your business license if you have a building that you have people come into it now has to be up to code in all these different ways it takes a ton of money to start it up now versus like if you just had the building and it was just you and no one was like oh you can't have this building unless it's up to our code blah blah blah, blah. you know you have to put forward a ton more money before you're even making any of it back so unless you have a big chunk to invest which poor people don't really have that to invest right. so it actually hurts them the most 
Like, and then there's the war on drugs, which is, you know. <laughs> the biggest thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we should all just smoke some pot. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think it would do a lot of people good. Let's yeah. make that to our new currency. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. I yeah, think hemp was uh, <laughs> available back to, back in uh, like 1700s in an acceptable form of currency. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, but even, yeah, but like we're talking about Bitcoin, the dollar in your pocket. Before 1913, there used to be competing currencies. Mm -hmm. Towns and banks had their own currencies. But then last thing government again wanted was that competition. So in 1913, they created the Federal Reserve. There's one downtown. And said no one's allowed to compete with the U.S. dollar. Uh, Have you guys, um, I'm sure you've heard of like the group Anonymous and yes. everything. Have you like researched into it and like what they're about, et cetera, et cetera? Is it kind of similar to what you're talking about, right? Yeah. They have um, November 5th. Fifth? Right. That's right. I, yeah. I don't know. I'm just. There's a big walk. No, yeah. Yeah. There's a big walk in D.C. You going to that? Um, I've been thinking about going to it, but I don't know if I'm actually going to wear the mask. Right. Or not. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind wearing the mask, but after like talking to my dad, he gave me this whole weird spiel of like covering your identity means you're hiding something. The and government blah, says blah, that's illegal, and they can arrest you for it. So. I mean, if but, but are they going to arrest a million people? people. Exactly. That's but cops idea. do that all the time when they kick down your door for a of plant. Of course. Right. right. But I can't. <laughs> As they're arresting me, I can't really you say can't that, that, you right. know. Like, <laughs> you guys, I need a career. Don't arrest me. Right, right, just right. take the mask. So. Uh, I'm actually now kind of curious to go in myself. Maybe a carpool out there would be pretty cool. I'm got, just saying because you can. It's a lot. It's very similar. Maybe you guys might, you know, go in and get a little riled up yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, thanks. Yeah, check us out. Um, my name is Cal. Does, does it say uh, when you guys? It just has your. We have a Facebook page. Yeah, we have a Facebook page. We have, you know, uh, we have Facebook a group. Find us out there. We add you in there. Uh, right. We have a YouTube channel. Uh, calendar events are coming up for this month, uh, this weekend. Yeah, so we do a lot of stuff. Board games. Uh, we go to the gun range as well. <laughs> we do play board games. Uh, I love board games. Yeah, and there's actually. a gun show. And I like guns too. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're very big in helping Video to games. educate each other, so. like about guns and how you get self defense. We've got. Uh, on Belle Isle. Oh, survival stoicism. Survival stoicism. Yeah, so learn marks for arts. Nice. Right. So nice. a lot of, I guess, self-empowerment really stuff. I'm totally down for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. I'm of course, glad of course. that I uh, met you guys. Absolutely. Thanks for Have stopping a good by. Day. Me too. Hopefully you talked to a lot of people today. Absolutely. <laughs> Take care. Left behind, the dollar size rule. But what about the fool who falls victim to the material world?